What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm doing a review on the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer, um, a wheel that was sent to me by Thrustmaster a, a little while ago and I'm finally getting around to doing a review on this. So um, just as a little bit of a backstory, the first time I tried this wheel was probably back in February of uh, 2017. I tried it at like David Greco's house in the UK when I was testing F1 2017 very early on. And I got my first hands-on with this wheel, and I was just completely blown away by how how intuitive the wheel felt, like how smooth it was, how how strong the force feedback was, and just how how nice and natural it felt while I was driving it on iRacing. racing. And from that moment, I knew I just had to have this wheel. And uh, here we are today, uh, a few months or many months later, um, now using it um, day in day out as part of my setup. So. Um, first of all, I want to say a massive thank you to Thrustmaster for sending sending this wheel out to me. Um, if it wasn't for them, I probably would have got this wheel anyway, so um, it was great that they were actually able to do that. But um, in this review, I'm going to try and be as unbiased as I possibly can. I do have quite a few negative points to say about this wheel. It is not perfect by any means, but we're going to go through the pros, we're going to go through the cons, and um, maybe give you like a... A recommendation as to whether you should buy this wheel or maybe a cheaper wheel or you know other wheels in the same kind of price point so just for reference I've done I'd say between 10 to 20 hours worth of driving in this so far so I've done quite a bit of uh, mileage with this and the previous wheel that I owned was the Thrustmaster TX so uh, basically a very similar wheel, just like a, a step down, I would say. So, in terms of feel, like the, the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer, um, overall, it doesn't feel that much different from the Thrustmaster TX, in all honesty. It just feels better in just about every aspect. So, um, the force feedback on the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer is incredibly smooth. It is, it's buttery smooth. It feels so natural. It's probably like the best superlative I can I can give this wheel it, it just feels so smooth and so natural and it allows me to just get on with the driving and it doesn't feel like it's too notchy or, or anything like that whereas other wheels I've driven in the past they just feel very yeah very notchy and very cheap and the you can hear like the belt or the rear of like that's the technical term you know when you like correct a slight and it goes and it's just like it doesn't sound great, it doesn't feel great, it's slow, whereas this is quick and direct and you can do just about everything you want to do in a split second. It is, it, it's so instant in that way and I really appreciate that because as you guys know, I race F1. When it comes to racing in F1 cars, you need that direct response and I feel like this wheel definitely gives that. It doesn't make me Michael Schumacher or anything, it doesn't make me any faster than my Thrustmaster T, TX. It just feels more natural. It might make me more consistent, if that makes sense. But overall, it won't make you Lewis Hamilton overnight. I just thought that was worth mentioning. So, yeah, force feedback is stronger than um, some of its uh, predecessors. Uh, it, the, the wheel itself, it's, it feels very premium. Like, everything that you touch is pretty much metal. Um, they have Alcantara grips, which, which do feel very nice to the hand. You will need gloves if you are going to use this wheel day in, day out. Um, simply because after over time, like sweat from your hands will just uh, wear away at the Alcantara and it won't look that nice. So if you are going to get this wheel, gloves are a must. In terms of the rest of the wheel, the buttons feel very nice, very solid, nice firm um, kind of feeling when you press them in. That's the buttons on the wheel face itself. The D-pad, it's it's better than the TX wheel, um, a lot better than the 458, you know, base rim, um, and even better than the Ferrari F1 replica rim as well so yeah you can reach it fairly easily it's a you have to reach over a little bit to get there but it, it's it's fine once you get used to it um, the grips I'd say are very thick they're a lot thicker than what I'm used to so make of that what you will um, sometimes when I first started using the wheel I did get cramps in my, my right hand and it's just an ergonomic thing like getting used to it I don't really feel those cramps anymore but um, just my initial impressions were that this this wheel this like the handles were quite a bit thicker than what I was used to but 
Um, that might be a positive thing for people with bigger hands, so to speak. But everything else, like the wheel is, is full of metal, like there's barely any pr plastic on this thing. Like literally only on the, um, the tops and the bottom of the handle grips and on the inside where the thumbs might cross over. Um, that is, that's pretty much it. There's a little bit of plastic on the back for the quick release. But literally everything else is made of metal and everything else is um, buttons. Now there is a bit of a gripe I do have with the little twist knob, but I'll get to that later in my cons section of the video. The paddles, like the shifters, feel very nice and very um, solid. They're, they're very sturdy. There's no absolutely no issues trying to reach them. With the hands, you can pretty much access those in the middle of a corner. You can shift whenever you want. And when you do shift with these paddles, it does have a very nice... And positive click when you when you press it in it, it's actually really satisfying I actually quite lo look forward to shifting up in the gears and um, that, that's actually pretty sad the design of the wheel I feel like is very nice it's it's very simplistic um, quite bare bones if if Thrustmaster don't mind me saying there isn't too much to this wheel um, so you've got the the very few buttons on the wheel the the twist knob, you've got the D-pad, a Thrustmaster logo in the middle of the of the wheel rim, and then the Thrustmaster logo um, kind of at the top of the rim where maybe some uh, sh shift lights would be in a in a Formula car. It's a shame that there are no shift lights actually there, illuminated like an LED light. That is something I wish was on this wheel, but apart from that, I can't really fault it. Um, the design of the base, again, it's, it's all black. It's got some nice metal bits on the top here, um, lots of cooling. A lot of um, slits for air to um, escape. Uh, in terms of like noise and stuff, this wheel is very quiet. I, I literally never hear it. Um, if anything, I, I try and listen out for it after I've finished, uh, you know, a racing session. Once I've like, you know, gone back to the pits, turned off the game. Um, the wheel is still running. Um, the fans are still spinning a little bit. Like that's literally the only time you can hear the fans, and that's for like two minutes while it cools down. And then once it gets to the right temperature. The fans are basically silent, like you, you never really hear it and especially if you are driving on a track and you've got headphones on or even if the game is playing out loud, you literally can't hear this wheel, it is um, pretty much silent. Apart from that, yeah you don't really hear the wheel as well like when you steer or make really quick um, counter steering moments, it, the wheel is very silent. So I'll try and make a lot of noise with the wheel now if I can and I'll bring the, the microphone really close. That's as loud as it gets. And when you're driving, you, you really aren't going to hear that anyway. In terms of other things that I like about this wheel, um, it's got a quick release system where it, it works as the whole Thrustmaster ecosystem where you can take off this rim, put on another one, and you're basically good to go pretty much. So you can take this formula rim off, you can put the um, Ferrari replica wheel on if you so choose to do so, you can put the 458 rim on, T300, whatever wheel face you want, you can basically put it on so long as it is a quick release wheel like the other models from Thrustmaster and that is um, really, really cool. So if you if you get bored of doing you know formula racing and you wanna do some drifting and you wanna actually put a, a round steering wheel on, you can do that, so that is entirely up to you and your preference and if you have other Thrustmaster products. And that's obviously a huge, huge benefit to getting a wheel like this. I'm not sure if I touched upon this either as well, just a little bit earlier, but the, the base is, is quite small. I'd say it's, um, I don't know, 10, 15% smaller than the Thrustmaster TX base. Um, this, this feels just a little bit smaller, a little bit sleeker, whereas the TX base is quite bulky. Um, this thing definitely saves on space, and um, I think that's all down to putting the um, the turbo as like the the power cord, if that makes sense. Like the big turbo, that, that thing is really heavy, by the way, um, and it just sits there as a dead weight on the floor um, next to me. But um, it does mean that you save some space in inside the the actual base itself, which sits on the wheel stand or your desk, depending on how you set that up. I would recommend putting it on a wheel stand. Um, something as high-end as this, I, I feel like you should be putting it on a on a wheel stand. Um, it definitely won't move, you can screw it in and that way you don't have to worry about um, the thing moving around on your desk or rattling your monitors or anything like that. I've never been a fan of mounting things to desks but uh, especially a wheel like this, it deserves to be um, treated right and put in and, and actually put on a on a wheel stand. And I think my final point which is a massive benefit for this wheel or getting this wheel is the fact that 
This wheel is the official wheel that is used in the F1 Esports series. So if you're from the F1 community like me and you want to take your racing to the next level, you want to be uh, you know, a, a really competitive driver, you want to um, fly off to Abu Dhabi or London or wherever you want to go for the Esports series and really um, take that level of competition um, to the extreme, then I feel like you need to get this wheel because this is what the competition is using and if you want to have any chance of, of being competitive then you need to get to know this wheel, especially if you aren't part of the Thrustmaster kind of family. Thrustmaster wheels feel a lot different to a lot of other wheels, for example like Logitech, like the force feedback for me feels so much different to Logitech and I just feel like it it feels that much better and it, it just, it's just worlds different so yeah, if, if you are looking to be very competitive and, and wanting to take your racing to the next level, then I would highly recommend this wheel because, like I said, this is what the competition is using. And if you want to be at that level, you really do need to get to know this wheel. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the pros out of the way, uh, just about. I do have a few, like, neutral points that I do want to touch base on, but before we get to that... Um, I will get to the to the cons, which uh, I'm sure you guys will probably want to know as well. If you're going to be spending the eight nine hundred dollars Australian dollars for this wheel, then you do want to know um, some of the shortcomings of this wheel before you um, get into this. So the negative points are the power cord itself is is very short. It connects to the turbo, and I feel like from the wheel to the turbo, there's probably like a meter. Um, worth of cord there and then from the turbo to the power socket you probably get like another meter meter and a half so just be aware that when you get this wheel uh, wherever your sim racing setup is based in your room you need to make sure that you're fairly close to a to a power socket because this won't extend that far so if if you're sitting in the middle of a lounge room or if you're in the middle of nowhere you need to get a power extension cord because it won't reach that far another negative is um, this wheel is only compatible on PC. So just beware that if you're on console, if you're on like uh, PS4 or Xbox One, you won't be able to use this wheel. Um, if you are looking to get a wheel that is compatible on both, so say if you're on Xbox One, I'd recommend the TX, um, TSXW wheel, the Sparco edition. Um, that, that wheel is exactly the same as this, like the base is exactly the same, so you'll get the same force feedback, you'll get the same strength, the same smoothness, um, but you'll be able to drive on both Xbox and PC, so I'd recommend that wheel, but the, the wheel rim isn't a formula rim, it is a kind of, it's it's the same wheel as what they have in V8 Supercars, so just bear that in mind um, if, if you are looking to be a console um, enthusiast as well as PC. Another negative I have with this wheel, I did mention it before very briefly, but it doesn't have any LED shift lights. For a wheel that's this expensive, and when you compare it to some of its competitors like uh, Fanatec for example, you get wheels that have the LED shift lights, and although it's, it's a little bit of a gimmick, I do feel like it does have its place because it is so cool to look down when, when you're driving sometimes to just sh see those shift lights illuminated. Um, just in your peripheral vision, but overall, like I said, it doesn't it doesn't affect me too much because most of the time you are concentrated on where you're going and, and on the screen, and, and more often than not, the in-car display will have shift lights um, when you're driving unless you alter your FOV. But um, yeah, for me, that's something that this wheel is lacking. I did touch upon earlier how the buttons themselves felt very nice, felt very positive to touch. One thing I don't really like interacting with is the little twist knob in the bottom right hand corner of the wheel face. So you have buttons 8, 13 and 7 and basically you have to twist the little knob to activate those. That's normally the start button for 8, 7 is like the flashback button for example when you're on the F1 games and if you want to use 13 you press in the little switch knob, um, the white button and that is button 13. I've never actually used that in game for any kind of control as of yet so I don't really know what purpose that has but for an extra button it is there but for the most part it, it feels fairly flimsy it's it's very yeah it's just flimsy and it just feels like rubber and, and plastic and it, it feels like it, it might wear away or possibly even break further down the line so I, I prefer not to use it and especially if you have gloves as well it is kind of hard to grip onto it and, and twist it 
um, fairly nicely. So just beware about that. That is a potential problem. But overall, yeah, that is probably one of the, the very minor flaws that this wheel has. And for my final con, um, this is actually a really small one. And probably for most of you guys who are in the market for this, this probably won't even be a problem. But like I said, you need gloves in order to... Uh, look after this wheel because like I said it has Alcantara grips which are a huge plus and they look really nice They feel really nice But uh, when it comes to the overall longevity of keeping this wheel in a good condition You do need, you do need to wear gloves and for someone like me. I've come from uh, a console kind of arcade racer kind of background and Using sim racing gloves is completely alien to me and, and for me um, Having to spend the extra money to get those gloves can be a con um, especially if you don't have them and once you do start getting them it does feel really weird to get used to It's hard to press in the button sometimes But like I said, I've got some proper sim racing gloves on the way and hopefully that can um, Enhance my experience, but for me It's kind of slows me down It kind of makes it feel a little bit clunky having to press it in with pressing buttons with with gloves and yeah But for, for most people who are like genuine sim racers, this probably won't even be an issue for you at all But just bear in mind yeah, if you do want to look after this wheel, gloves are a must. Okay, so with that said, um, hopefully all of those positive and negative things hit home for you guys. I do have a few neutral points to put across before I end off this review. And some of those neutral points are the price. I, I didn't really put the price as a negative, simply because you kind of know what you're getting into when you get this wheel. This wheel is priced this highly for a reason. I think it's like around 500 US dollars, uh, maybe even less now that the wheel is about a year old, so you could uh, potentially find some good deals on this um, at the time of recording this, or maybe even later if you're watching this later, but if you're from Australia, it is, it is fairly expensive, but in all honesty, you do get what you pay for. It, it really is a, a premium kind of product. I feel like this is like kind of the best you can get in terms of like a, a readily available uh, steering wheel you can just buy online before you get to those direct drive, those really hardcore sim racing wheels. This is kind of like the top of the line before you get to that stage. So just bear in mind the price does reflect that and you kind of, yeah, like I said, you do get what you pay for. Included in the price, well not included in the price, is pedals. You actually don't get a pedal set when you buy this wheel. So this can both be taken as a positive but also a negative. Because if you're in the market to get your first racing wheel, this this may not be the wheel for you because you don't get pedals, you're going to have to go out and buy another set. Whereas if you already have an established sim racing setup, you might already have some really good pedals. So that can be seen as a positive because you don't have to pay for pedals that you're not going to use. So the option is there for you to go out and get some other pedals. The ones that I use are the Thrustmaster T3PA pedals. They've been good up until this point, but I feel like now it's it's probably time for an upgrade and I feel like Thrustmaster need to offer some high-end pedals that really go with this wheel because there are some competitors out there who offer some really good pedals like the load cell um, technology. That's where I kind of feel like Thrustmaster needs to go um, in order to offer some pedals that really fit the bill when it comes to having a good, a great pedal set and also a great wheel to go with as well. So. Yeah, the option is there. If you want to get some load cell brakes, you can get those from another manufacturer um, to go with this wheel. And I feel like that is probably what I'm going to do in the not too distant future because the T3PA pedals have been great for me over the last two years with my TX. But now I feel like it's time to, uh, to step up. So that's uh, the final neutral point um, I have with this wheel. Like I said, it's a year old. You can get it for probably just under 500 US dollars. I don't know what that equates to in like pounds or euros um, I think I feel like it's probably fairly similar at this point um, Australian dollars you're looking at like eight nine hundred dollars and um, if you want to get a wheel that's compatible with the um, consoles like the Xbox one that I would recommend the TX uh, TSXW the Sparko edition but that wheel you're nearing on a thousand dollars maybe even like eleven hundred dollars so a lot of money you do get pedals with that but um, that is the trade-off for what you get when you're in the market for wheels at this kind of level. So who would I recommend this wheel to? I would recommend this to people who are looking to get like their second or third wheel. If you're a newbie to when it comes to like racing or you've never had a racing wheel before, I actually would not recommend this wheel to you. I would recommend 
like a T300 or a um, TX wheel um, because then you get the best of both worlds. You can you can get a wheel that's compatible on the Xbox, you can get a wheel that's compatible on the PC. In the T300's case, um, you can use that on PS4 and the PC. Whereas this, you are strictly limited to PC and you do pay um, quite a price for that. So just bear that in mind. I would only get this wheel if you're seriously looking at upping your driving um, skill if you like want to compete in the F1 esports or like I said you've already had like a Logitech or another Thrustmaster product before then I would highly recommend this wheel it is definitely worth the money but probably not when you're first starting out I don't feel like you get the most out of it straight away so that's kind of my first uh, you know thoughts and, and impressions and review of this Thrustmaster TSPC racer. If there are any questions you have about this wheel, before, be sure to uh, leave them down in the comments. I will answer as many questions as I possibly can. Thank you as well to Thrustmaster as well for sending out this wheel. Um, I tried to be as unbiased as I possibly can. I do have other Thrustmaster products which I've bought in the past and um, I can only recommend them. They're you know some of the best wheels out there for the money that you can get. So um, yeah, I, I really do rate them and they are very, very solid, um, affordable wheels. So that's all that there is to say. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I see plenty more racing game content. And uh, yeah, until the next one, I'll see you next time.